So this is a little different. And to the ones who did get to see the original day 35 vlog, good for you. But uh, wow, apparently in this great country of America with the freedom of speech and all those cool rights that we have, I'm not allowed to say how I feel about what what happened with my own son. So uh, I'm gonna quickly cut those parts out so that I don't end the streak and re-upload it. And this, I'll, I'll go, I'll end up going live and discussing this in a live that they can strike down because that's not gonna mess up this streak I got going, but you guys know me, I'm not one to just lay down. I'll edit this and put this right back up. What, this is so insane to me that they literally just nuked my video because just me sharing my opinion of what I think happened to my own son, man. Anyway, love you guys, man. Been late. Been late. Dedicate that to you, son. Keep an eye on it. Watch your mouth. That uptown baby. Lord Tariq and Peter Guns. I know you guys remember that. So, you guys want to hear the inappropriate thing I just said to my sons this morning? I said that, talking about Diddy, I guess he got a new attorney and is going to try for another hearing about Bond, which. I don't know, man, I remember when I was sitting in, in county jail, like you didn't just pop off hearings. Clearly, that means it has something to do with having money, right? Because he's like, oh, you told me no? Cool, let me get this other attorney and try it again. Like, where they do that at? I guess in New York, if you're Diddy. But uh, I was like, man, I was telling my boys, I said, he's willing to put up $50 million. Like, that's a lot of money for some bondsman to handle or whatever. My one boy was like, yeah, that's the craziest part is he's willing to pay $50 million. And I'm like, they just don't get it. Like I would, when you're in there, yeah, I don't, you don't care. If you had a billion and $2, you would give your billion dollars up and be like, I'm cool with two, I can figure it out. <laughs> when you, well, at least me anyway. But as they were getting out of the truck to go into the school, I was like, if I was him, I would just fled the country. You know? You can get baby oil in Cuba. It's just Cuban baby oil, right? And they both got a good laugh when I was getting out of the truck, but I probably shouldn't have said it. Today's kinetic. Look, I'm a little sharper now. This one is the pineapple passion fruit. Well, let me say something. Before I open this, <clears throat> and, and I know a lot of, you know, it's probably people thinking, all right, you know, is he getting paid to do this or is he just trying to do this to get somebody's attention or something? Nah, bro. But let me say this too, over just drinking it one day, generally when I come home, just from a regular day, I am dragging so bad just from the day, I barely made it through. And then I get home and I'm like, ah. I go in the garage for a minute and sit down. And like, eh, let me say it for a minute, figure out life. And then I go in the house and whatever, and I kind of piddle around and have no energy to do anything. Yesterday was not only a hard day, like hard, hard day. You guys know if you watched yesterday's video, I had the big job that I was dreading, crawling in and out of underneath of a house and above the house. And then I had to go all the way down to the bottom of this hill to get supplies and carry them up because that's where they were. Anyway, um, a di I guess a night I should have been more tired than, than ever. I got home from work, dropped off one of the ingredients that she needed for dinner, and then I was like, hey, I'm running to Lowe's real quick to get some flooring. I ran up to Lowe's, grabbed the flooring, and then came back home and went down into the basement and laid another section of flooring. Yeah, I better open this soon, huh? 
And then I ate dinner and, you know, slowed down with the bed or whatever. And I, so I was telling her this morning, I was like, man, I, I did a lot yesterday. I was just going and going and going. And I know some of that's probably just the joy of getting that big job off of my shoulders. That pressure, man, it just weighs me down. I'm that type of person that I'm like, man, you got this thing you got to do, James. And you know there's no way around it. You got to do it. And once it's over, I'm like, man, I, it, that wasn't so bad. I knew I could do it. <laughs> so there's a little bit of energy boost from that, I guess. Second wind, if you will. Pineapple passion fruit. That sounds good, doesn't it? Cheers. Mm. You know, none of these are like overly sweet. That's what she was saying yesterday, which I need to, I should have recorded her saying what she thought about it. I forgot about it, honestly. I was too busy running around. She said the same thing. She said it actually tastes like what you would get from a real fruit, which is crazy. I'm sure it's just extract or whatever, but it actually, it mimics the taste of a real fruit. Cause you know, real fruit isn't like all super fruity and sweet. Like they make other drinks and stuff taste like, but that's, it's weird. Cause you take a drink of it and then you're like, mm, that's, that's different. And then a couple minutes later, you're like, I want another drink of it. And I said that to her, and she's like, oh, my God, that's exactly how I felt about it. If we weren't so busy, we would sit together and say that, probably. But that's what we're looking for this for. We're truly looking, all jokes aside, no kidding, we're truly looking for something that can help us get through the day. I know there's other people out there, so I'm not just, oh, you know, speaking to a crowd of people who don't understand. But... When you've got a house full of kids that each and every one of them is in a different grade, has a different thing going on, has to be, you know, you got to make sure that they're up, ready, they got everything they need for school, get them to school, and then get yourself to work, organize yourself, make sure everything at work is, is doing what it's supposed to do, you know, and then leave work, go back, get them from school, get them to the house get all their laundry done, get all their things done, get it, whatever, the little one's backpack unpacked and see what, you know, what all he needs for school or what all he did or whatever. Uh, cook dinner, clean house after dinner, and then get all these kids to bed and then do it again the next day. We're truly a couple who are looking for something to make that a little bit easier, to not just be pounding a bunch of Red Bulls, screwing our stomachs up, just to have that crash after anyway and be super tired at the end of the day and red bulls it's competitive pricing wise like red bulls are what like six bucks for a 12 ounce can so this isn't like that's that's the main driving force behind this is we're looking for something that'll make us feel better i gotta go do this pre-trip and get this truck on the road i should have been on the road already i got some funny stuff that i'm working on and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna do it as a video on its own because there's gonna be music in that I can't get around and it's gonna mess up the, our whole plan of paying this truck off, baby, woo. So I, I'll let you guys know about it at least. But just a little hint, the guy I was talking about at the beginning of this video is- Yo, Welcome back, lovely people. Let me roll this window up real quick. You know, you don't no matter how long you drive it, you'll never get used to it. Some of these Freightliner trucks, the window crank, is the opposite direction in order to roll it up you got to roll it this way which makes no sense anyway now that that very important piece of information has been delivered i'm going to move on to something that i've hesitated to talk about for a long time now for obvious reasons and a couple people have touched on it in the comment section before but I left it be and didn't say anything else about it. But let's go ahead and address it. The reason for this is I was looking for an old video earlier today on my lunch break. And it was kind of the last straw for me that I said, I'm going to talk about this subject regardless. And I hope it doesn't get any, any kind of trouble on YouTube because I know there's it's probably a touchy subject because there's a lot of people with strong feelings about it out there. And... I have very strong feelings about it, but 
if this is true and there is a link that can be proven, then obviously there's a lot of medical companies, doctors, pharmaceutical, whatever, that's in a lot of trouble. But the big question, is there a link between required for kids in order to go to public schools and autism? Is there a link? Well, I know there's a lot of parents out there that have evidence of their own to present, and I've got some too. Let me show you something. A video of my son at only right around a year old, maybe 11 months old, not quite a year. This is a video of how engaged eye contact and, and all that my son was before he even had a chance to learn how to speak. This boy, being a six-year-old, non-verbal, autistic kid now, doesn't speak at all, barely makes eye contact. There's not a lot of interaction. This is a video. He was beside me in his car seat in a little single cab Chevy Colorado that I used to drive. And I was just teasing, going back and forth with him and saying, hey, you're, you're so handsome. And he kept saying, huh, huh. And then when I say, are you messing with me? And I said, are you a meanie? Watch how this kid communicates with his eyes and his facial features. Just look at the way he communicates with his face. And, and remind you the whole time, he's making full eye contact with me as we're doing this. Now, of course, the camera, he's not looking at the camera, but he's looking over the camera at me the entire time. But go ahead and watch that video. I'll get this truck part. We'll pick back up on this, man. But, man, it fires me up every time I see it, guys. Huh? You're handsome. I said you're handsome. I said you're handsome. I, how come you can't hear me? I said you're handsome. Are you saying huh? Or are you just messing with me? Are you messing with me? Are you being a meanie? Huh? Don't look at me like that. Are you being a meanie? Oh, you're right. So, you know, it's kind of weird to jump around hours later and try to pick up on that conversation where I left off at. But, and I'm not trying to stir the pot in any way. I get it. There's people out there who feel strongly the other way. And, and I'm not trying to give false hope to parents out there who, you know, are looking for confirmation. And try to find that in me in some way. I'm an idiot. I'm just a goofball on the internet that just am very thankful that I have a small but good sized group of people who care to listen to me ramble every day. And I, I truly appreciate that. But, cause it's more than just paying a truck off, baby, woo. <laughs> but no, it's relatable, man. And I want, I, I've seen a lot of comments and that's telling too, and how common autism actually is nowadays there's so many people my age with kids that are autistic and like i said i'm not trying to give false hope to any one of you guys and go i knew it the gotcha man confirmed it no and nobody will right and it's not even the self sometimes it's just a byproduct of the like there's that there's mercury used and that obviously causes neurological problems. But there's also the problem with the municipal water. And that's one thing that nobody ever talks about when they talk about autism and, and issues in children, you know, mental disorders and anything that handicaps the development of the brain. Uh, and that's why it's so important to educate people. And it, it's strange that somebody is big, and I keep saying, Jake Paul, but I think it's Logan Paul. I don't, I don't care to know the difference, but I've been corrected enough times. Uh, I think it's the Logan dude that made the prime energy drink with his buddy uh, that like they used to box or something. I don't know. But the fact that they weren't educated enough to know that there was PFAS in the water that they were using. And, and for people who don't know, PFAS is the forever chemical. PFAS is the chemical that they found and it's and it's it's 
resistant to anything. It doesn't break down with heat. It doesn't break down with chemicals. It doesn't break down at all. Once it's in your body, that's why it's called a forever chemical. It's in there forever. And PFAS and things, you know, there's also lead, arsenic, mercury in the water as well. Boy, am I getting controversial in this one, right? But the problem is the EPA, they set standards on these things, right? There's a, there's a, a meeting of sorts and it's like, how much lead are we gonna say is the acceptable amount in the municipal supply this year? And they're like, how much money do we got to treat it? And I, I know you guys think because I'm the jokester guy that I'm kidding around. I'm not kidding around at all. They actually will change the standards and change the, the amount, the EPA guideline for how much is except how much arsenic, how many parts per million of arsenic are we gonna allow in the city's drinking water this year? Depends on how much money we got to treat it. Think about it. I mean, if you're living in one of those broke ass little towns like Flint, Michigan, and <laughs> I mean, they're doing something about it now, obviously, because it was a, a big enough problem, but you're, you're living in one of those broke towns where, you know, you, the traffic lights are burnt out. Uh, you know, you look around at your town at how much money there is to spend to keep your town together. That's also part of the budget is the water treatment plant, right? It takes pretty elaborate systems to remove this stuff. So when you really think about it, every aspect of life you're putting in somebody else's hands. You know, people are all the time getting upset at the police. Oh, the police didn't do a really good job in this one instance. They're people, you know? Uh, the, the ambulance driver uh, or the, the paramedic that picked me up should have gave me 10 milligrams of this one stuff they gave me five and you know i'm permanently damaged by that he's he's a human man you know that's a high stress situation anyway that's why certain people need to steer clear of jobs like that and i'm one of them i, I would never bruh listen but back to autism man it's tough and me being somebody who films my family as much as possible I'm thankful to have those videos and have those memories of him when he was his old self. And we put it off, man. That was another thing that, that we may, that may have been an issue. I don't know. I don't know if there's side effects of putting it off, but we were guilty of putting it off. We didn't want to do it. It was already on our minds. We're like, man, we don't want to do this. But we put it off so long that our doctor, our pediatrician was like, dude, you, he's got to have them. And I'm not kidding you. It was a night and day difference. He got the shits. He got a real bad fever. And this is another good example of trusting, you know, that the person who is, is giving you this, whatever, this treatment, this, this medical care, trusting that they're going to do their job thoroughly. Have you ever been at work and didn't want to do your job thoroughly? Well, sometimes you're going to catch a doctor or an ER nurse but he got a real bad fever and me and her took him in to urgent care we're like man it's he looked pathetic i mean he it was such a high fever we couldn't break it with motrin and tylenol and so we took him in there the immediate they as soon as they got him in that room they were like well let's get a catheter started and they're trying to pull his pants off and let's, let's put a catheter in him and thankfully my wife was there and thinks a little bit clearer than i do and is a little bit smarter than me and she was like, don't you have, you know, one of those catch pants or whatever? And it's basically like a diaper that has a collection thing, like, built into it that you could put on a baby and just kind of wait it out, right? And then whenever they go, it'll go into this collection thing. I didn't know what she was even talking about. I'd never heard of that. But the nurse was like, yeah, that's a good point. We, we could try that first. And I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> like, she just saved my son from getting, imagine, right? Imagine a one-year-old and then poking around with a catheter, trying to get a catheter in that poor little guy, man. But anyway, I keep getting off topic, but it all, it all goes the same direction. It all has the same point that I'm trying to make, which is we're all human and we're all just, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel better about or what caused it. But at the end of the day, we're all humans. And I like to think that the people that are in the labs trying to make these are doing it for the right reasons. They're in there, they're trying to make, a, they're trying to keep the next big illness breakout to a minimum. 
And I have to believe that to, for myself to stay sane. Like, if I think that there's just evil doctors in there or evil lab guys in there brewing up some bullshit to make us all sick and then charge us for it and just want to, you know, make a bunch of money off of us while we're all autistic or whatever, then that's not a world I want to live in. And I'd, I'd like to think that's not the world I do live in. But I, I'm just going to say this. I'm, I'm going to end this part of this discussion with, with saying this. I do 100% believe, and the reason being is because I've seen it with my own two eyes. I 100% believe that yes, indeed, And I have to. The reason is, is because my son was one way prior to the and was another way after. Eating issues, uh, the not making the eye contact, the not being engaged with me, the not, not having a personality of his own, just that blank stare on his face. And then these, here's the other thing this, that people don't talk about with autism. And I plan to showcase that quite a bit in these vlogs uh, in the weeks and months to come. Is how freaking intelligent this guy is. I've got videos. I'll just go ahead and put one in right here. He can't speak, right? He's nonverbal. This kid could read before the age of two. He could he could put numbers in a row. That's the part that I, you know, there was a point where I, I had gotten past the acceptance of the diagnosis that yes, my son is in fact autistic. There's nothing I can, you know, as a man and his first blood son, it was a, it was a tough pill to swallow. I was like, man, you know, I just thought about all the things that I'm not going to get to do with him. But then, and I want to thank God for this, that God was, he, God, it had to be God that gave me the ability to see the positives in it the the ability to go you know what we might not be able to do that but i've got a kid that's so stinking smart and we can find things that he is good at and you know lean into his strengths and interest which here lately has been like animation editing and stuff like that which is incredible super smart he's bored with all the letters and stuff I mean, he knows the Greek alphabet, the Russian alphabet, obviously the American alphabet. No, this stuff bores him. I mean, he is on a different level, intelligent-wise. We just got to get the social thing turned around. And lately, you know, the teachers and the aide 
have been working with him a lot on that. I pulled over here for a second because I wanted to show you another <laughs> gotcha man venture from the past and I'm surprised this place is still standing. But, so check this out real quick. So prior to my high speed chase incident, uh, this is where I was living actually when it happened, I should say. Uh, there was a garage right here and I used to park my motorcycle inside that garage and this was a duplex let me zoom out here a little bit this was a duplex here i i rented this one to my sister there was a young college kid that lived up in this one for a little while but i left this one empty most of the time this place in my opinion it it had so much potential and i and i seen so much for it and i was like man i could really make this place something and the last thing I done right before my arrest was I had gotten a little electric power washer and I, and that's part of the reason it probably rotted out faster is I power washed all of this, but then never done, never done anything after that. I mean, you can't even see the porch really, but I had put some new flashing up here because it had started leaking a little bit, but at one point, I think it was before my sister rented that one, I had a, a big bed right in there. I would just push my motorcycle in and real bachelor type stuff, just motorcycle sitting for next the to the longest time, it was hard for me to even come by here just because it was another failure point in my recovery and in my journey to getting my life together. I would get, I would get so far along and then I, the, the literal definition of two steps forward and three steps back because like i say i was not only did i have one place to live but i pretty much had two places uh i didn't fully own it but i was in the process of land contracting it and then whatever i made from rent i could make the payment towards and i it was a point in my life where i felt like i had a solid plan and then i bought that motorcycle and i come home from work one night and i walked right back here into this back door into the fridge in there and uh started drinking some gentleman's jack daniels that double brewed whatever and uh my buddies hit me up was like man let's get on our bikes and go to the bar i was like nah i don't want to go to the bar i don't i don't really do that no like, oh let's go man let's go anyway long story short i get the bike out go to the bar get hammered dancing with some girl and kept drinking whatever she had and some water bottle and then before i knew it i went to get on the bike and go around the block and a cop tried to pull me over and i just was like you know it'd be fun as if i ran <laughs> Fuck. jesus but I don't know if I can find it, but there was a picture of me right before I got arrested. My dad had actually stopped over, rest in peace. And I got a picture with him right out front there. And I think I could find a picture of when I was power washing out here. Uh, my little boy was out here helping me power wash. I think I got a picture of that too. If I do, I'll lay it over this. but. Man, it's kind of weird, I, and I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to look my failures right in the, right in the face, you know, just come by and look at it. Because I, that was a tough one. Man, I sat, because that's the way they do me. They get a secret indictment on me, and when they finally come and get me, they know how much time they have. I don't know if I ever told that story or not, and it's kind of funny because here recently when I heard people talking about Durkee and getting arrested on an indictment and everybody's like, oh, they have to arraign him in a certain amount, you know, they got to arraign him this Monday or whatever. If it's anything like up here, they don't. Because I tell you how they did me. They come and pick me up on an indictment. And it was a, I want to say it was a Thursday. I was at work and I had one of those cubicle jobs and you imagine how that looked when SWAT comes into the cubicles to get you. So that job's in history, right? 
I wasn't going back to that job anytime soon. But the arrest of me took me down there and I, it was, like I say, I was actually doing kind of decent. I had a couple thousand dollars in the bank and my thought process was, you know, by Monday morning, they'll arraign me. I'll find out what the bail is and I'll bail out of this situation. No, I sat there for a couple months. I sat there all the way up through pre-trials to the point and, and taking a deal. Like literally a plea offer was reached before I even thought about getting out. No bond, no bond at all. Never had a bond hearing whatsoever. They were like, you're sitting there. And so by the time I had a hearing to where I could actually say whatever, I, they offered me three years probation. I, it was an F felony fours. So I think I had 24 months over my head. And guys, this is just 20, 17, 2016, not that long ago, but this is the last time I ever got in trouble. And, and ultimately what pretty much landed me in the homeless shelter. Anyway, that was depressing, but let me know your thoughts in the comments about the link between autism and vaccines. And I don't want to stir up too much trouble, but just let me know how you guys feel about it. Point me in the direction of some other information. If you got, you know, I've seen all this stuff, yeah, you know, but big news is gonna is gonna always say no that's there's no link to it no, you know it's it's a pretty bold move to admit something like that so but anyway i love you guys and if you guys do have kids that are autistic hey ain't they special in their own way man super smart i mean geniuses i mean who you know we can always figure out how to talk later but these guys are gonna these guys are gonna cure cancer one day i'm telling you Daddy's home. <gasps> Daddy's home, buddy. Hi. Hi, buddy. What are you making? Are you editing something? Goodbye. Hey, can you say hi? Hi. Whoa. Oh, my God. Good job. High five. Good job, dude. Well, all righty then. I'm gonna go in here and lay some more of this flooring down for my boy. See how much of that I can get done. And um, gotta get his new dresser down there, which is starting to get dusty. It's kind of a modern look here. It's got some glass on the front of it. It's actually really Nice dresser to go good with that. You know, that saw grass flooring, that the saw grass that's so hard to find <laughs> flooring. But I love you guys, man. Hopefully this wasn't too deep or too too weird of a video. But one more in the books. Day 34, is it? 34 days in a row, dude. A hundred's starting to feel a lot more possible now. But I love you guys. 34, number 34. 30, what? It'll be 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and then we'll pay that truck off, baby. Woo!